So, how about unions, huh? I want to get into what this means, but first, let's talk about the story. And also, what do you think of green? Should I wear black? Just stick with black? Let me know down in the comments. Let's get over here to the tech crunch, though. This story comes to us from Anthony Ha! I like that. I probably said it wrong, but I like the, the last name. Ha! Like an, like, a, like an anime attack. Ha! Anthony Ha! It's good. It's good. It's a hell of a way to introduce yourself, by the way. So, Anthony brings us Bethesda Game Studios employees to form a wall-to-wall -wall union. Now, what this means is, okay, is that they're not just going to unionize the devs. They're not just going to unionize the writers. They're not just going to unionize the mocap team, the actors, the voice act. That's everybody that's contracted with the studio as a salaried employee will be coming into the union. Now, they're joining the Communication Workers uh, of America, the CWA. The CWA represents other institutions like Verizon. You may remember the somewhat violent incidents with the Verizon strike that happened quite a few years ago. Unfortunately, the CWA was part of those things, so it's, it's kind of one of those things that unions do sometimes. They play a heavy hand in the hopes that it scares businesses into compliance, and sometimes it works in their favor, sometimes it doesn't. I don't agree with it. I don't believe that it's necessary to employ any kind of scare tactics when you're going to be a union. I think if you produce what the, the problem is and you agree to unionize in order to present these issues to your bosses who have until now ignored you, I think that that's okay. But employing violent tactics and then trying to cripple the business for not going along with your unionization, not a good idea. Not safe, not fun, okay? Don't do that. So this is the story, though is that Bethesda's new union, the first wall-to-wall -wall union at a Microsoft game studio because it stretches across development teams, job titles, including artists, en engineers, programmers, and designers. This also includes contracted voice actors, people who are contracted, not freelancers, people who are contracted. I don't know who those people are, but that's part of it. The CWA says the union will represent a total of 241 workers. Now, my guess is that's most, if not all, of the people who will be at Bethesda. So I think what's going to happen is it's going to be a mandatory join-up. That You have to join the union in order to work at Bethesda. It has its, you know, tug-and-pull situation, right? Sometimes that's good for the person, sometimes it's not, depending on their own individual situation. So... <clears throat> This was in response to workers having signed a union card or been part of an online portal, like you go in, you register that you work for the company, and then vote as to whether or not you want to unionize or not. And so these people went and, and made this known. And so the, the group has moved forward approaching Microsoft saying, we want to be a union. And so it also says Microsoft has recognized the union, a voluntary step that avoids an election and precedes the actual contract negotiation. So, what that means, okay, so if you're not familiar with this, is that sometimes when a business resists this, the union must then elect to go ahead and force it upon the business. So therefore, there won't be a process to elect people who run the union, there won't be an election process to distribute, you know, the powers within the union in order to fight the business into compliance. Now, this also means that Microsoft is putting out the olive branch, acknowledging that there's problems and they're ready to address them. So this could mean not necessarily a blank check for Ubisoft. Excuse me. I got Ubisoft on the brain. We'll get to them in just a minute. But the, uh, this may mean that the Bethesda union, the Bethesda union may not get a blank check from Microsoft, but they may get most of their demands met because Microsoft acknowledging this is already uh, like a huge uh, indicator, if you will, that they are not in opposition to the majority of the union's uh, requests. Ordinarily, if there's too, hill, too high of a hill to climb, they won't bother and they'll fight the union into, comply, into complying to a compromise. So it would appear that Microsoft is saying, this is cool. We don't want to give you the indication we're not cool with this. We get what you're up to. We understand there's been problems. Let's get to the bottom of this so we can get back to work. Now, there is a YouTuber named David uh, uh, Jeffies, right? He's the fellow behind, I believe, the God of War series. And uh, he talks about games that are uh, more social. And he talks about, like, Roblox, and he's talking about things like the Minecraft servers, Among Us, games like Fortnite, where you're sort of in a social setting, uh, a bit like Helldivers 2, right? 
Remember how big that got before Sony decided to screw it up and now it's dead? What a surprise. But uh, as you can see below, I do have some like ADD satisfying footage from uh, Fallout 76 there. You know, if you just happen to not play that like I did because you didn't want a piece of that action. <laughs> I don't even think they fixed it yet. Nothing against the devs. I, I, that's totally a leadership problem. They dropped the ball on this whole thing. But I want to make sure that we understand this about Bethesda before we move on. I, I forgot this one piece as we were talking about this, and I'm looking down at it. What you need to remember about this, right? David Jaffe's brought this up about these game development studios and what's going to happen as they continue to unionize. And this will lead us into our conversation about Ubisoft. So if you want to hear about Ubisoft, just, just hold on just a second, okay? So here we go. What happens with this is that as the union comes in, prices for work, labor, is going to go higher, all right? This is what happens. In order to standardize pay and not, like, have Jim paid less than Sally, you know, they've got to even everybody out. And that doesn't mean bringing Jim down to Sally's level. It doesn't mean bringing Sally down to Jim's level. That means bringing everybody up together, which is very expensive for the, like, host studio, the people, the business that is intending to pay for this labor. So, what you're going to see is you're going to see the studios then basically impose upon these devs that they have a standard now that they have to create with it. You won't have these weird, bizarre choices in video games anymore. You won't have these very strange, esoteric sort of side missions like the, um, the deaf character in the Spider-Man 2 um, story that's just like way out there. Sorry, my cheek is just way way out there in like this vision of we need to represent these people in a spider-man game where you were just previously swinging between buildings dodging traffic and fighting an assortment of villains bank robbers and other ne'er-do-wells now go spray paint racial discriminatory poetry on the walls of a building i guess this is what we put in video games now, but this is the triple A game situation. Now, what I meant when Jeffries brought up games like Roblox and Fortnite and Minecraft with servers among us is that that's what the triple A games are competing against. And what developers, uh, excuse me, what studios are learning is that these communal games, these games that involve a group of people or more than one player either accessing online or in a local, like a LAN, like a local access, they need to be doing more of those. These games where you modify your, um, your, uh, I'm sorry, I just got a message in here. Um, I just want to let you guys know we're doing really great, okay? <laughs> but uh, the situation is, is that these games are social. They're going to demand that people playing them, like, interact with one another. And that's what the selling point to things like Fortnite and uh, Among Us have been, okay? That's what the, uh, the, the selling point to all these different games have been. Now, what you don't get in a game like Fallout 76 is this interaction. Now, granted, it is an online game, but it's not requiring you to work together. I think 76 is online. Could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe 76 is online. And so the problem with that is, is that you're not encouraged to build a team. You can just out of your own volition, you know, your own kindness. But it was the same thing with the other Bethesda game that went online. I think it was Elder Scrolls Online. There really wasn't a need to form a team. You could because the powers balanced each other in a way that when you formed a team, you were like a D and D group, and you kind of made up what one character's weakness would be. But in the Elder Scrolls setting, you're only as weak as you want to be. You can go and become perfect in all of the different uh, skills you can level up. So it's like. Little defeats the point, right? So this is enters the idea of these games where you're playing with your friends, where you're playing, you're working together. Pico Park is a really good example of this. If you haven't heard, it's a really, really cute game. Uh, you play it with your friends, and it involves everybody working as a team and in tandem sometimes, taking exact steps at the same time or you lose instantly. And so, I don't know, it's a lot of fun, but it definitely trains team dynamics, okay? These kinds of things are very popular among youth and players my age. I don't know about above us out there in Gen X land. I don't know about that. I think those guys are still on, like, uh, you know, arcade games and N64 stuff. And that's cool. That's fine. Retro tech is pretty awesome. But these game devs want to make new stuff. And so the studios seeking to save money, bring it around, bring it around town. Here we go. The studios, in order to save money, are going to say, 
no more of this crazy stuff like Starfield where everybody's like, choose your pronouns, be be address me as a they them or it they or whatever and all or whatever or what slash ever right and my pronouns are what slash ever you know it's it's one of these situations where all of these very strange decisions that are meant to like expand the world you know the world of the triple a gaming environment kind of defeat the purpose of gaming as it's practiced today a lot of people go on and they play things like Call of Duty, they go on and play things like Fortnite, because it's an opportunity to socialize. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but since the pandemic, people just don't get together much anymore. There's either business in the way, or there's just like a sort of set rhythm to go home and play video games, relax, be by yourself, have a bit of solitary time. It's a bit overwhelming out in the world lately. In case you haven't noticed, there's quite a bit of chaos out there. So, the situation that these guys are finding themselves in as they unionize is that with the price of this, along with union dues, along with having to show up and take votes and listen to other people's testimony about what the union should next move for, along with all those responsibilities, now will come from the studio the responsibility of making a game that is going to appeal to a, an audience that is not interested in an expansive world, but interested in socializing. I'll point out to you that there are several million subscriber YouTube channels, like I think Vanoss Gaming is one of them, almost 25,000, 25 million subscribers now. I think Evan's up there. And they play Uno. They play Uno through the Ubisoft portal because they're geniuses like that. But they play Uno. They play Uno in Roblox. They go into Minecraft and they create these different maps together and they play as a communal group. And this is how a lot of um, Let's Plays are sort of done now. So as people who are or a younger set that sort of get their entertainment from this, they're sort of incentivized to play games in this manner. Maybe you've heard of the Game Grumps. They're popular with the Zoomers as well as the Millennials. I, I came up with the Game Grumps. They, I was, uh, I think I was like, uh, yeah, I was just turning 20 when Aaron and John got together, put together the Game Grumps. They, it's a, you know, John went away and did his thing, and Aaron kept on with the brand. And if you don't know, that's why they split up, is John didn't want to obey branding, and Aaron did. And, it, it worked well, worked out for both of them, apparently, you know? But that's how most people absorb gaming now. Believe it or not, a lot of people who don't play the games watch them. They watch people like Vanoss Gaming, Game Grumps, um, Nogla, um, Smitty, uh, Buys, these different guys that play all these strange one-off indie games that allow them to play with their friends together in a communal environment. And that's what a lot of people are absorbing in gaming now, okay? But you have, Beth you have Bethesda just being big brain about this beforehand. So they're, before they even unionize, they're shooting themselves in the foot. If you remember earlier this year, Spencer Bakuli over at Bounding Into Comics brought us this story. It says, Microsoft guts Bethesda's workforce shutters Redfall and Hi-Fi Rush Studios in order to focus on our priority games. What would be those priority games? It's anyone's guess right now, considering they're unionized, which means you're unionizing, which means work is probably paused at the moment. So what you're going to find here is that this was a game that involved people working together in an online environment. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush was, I believe you had, it was sort of like an Overwatch-style game meets... Um, Jet Set Radio had a lot of like rhythm based combat stuff. And I believe, much like Injustice Gods Among Us, you were able to connect online and fight against other players and their teams that they had custom assembled. I believe it was kind of like that. So, well, you know, again, it's canceled, so it's over with. But anyway, this, this is again the mistake that they made is that they prioritize things like Starfield, right? These, these games that don't really involve you being requiring you to work together, requiring you to have your friends along and goof around on each other and see how many frag grenades you can <laughs> blow up the environment you're in with before you kill all your friends and you can't play anymore because they're mad at you, you know? This, this kind of gaming, right, is what is now very popular. And so they kicked off this stuff. They beat out Hi-Fi Rush in order to prioritize games where you sit by yourself and cruise through space endlessly. Now, I watched a playthrough of it over on Oni Plays. This is another one. This is Oni Plays. Another great channel, check out the gigantic channel, you can't miss it. And these guys sit on a couch together, and they play a game in the same room. And they make funny voices, and they make fun of each other, and make fun of the gameplay you're watching. 
And that's how it's done now. That's, these games are not serious environments. A lot of the people that are my age and younger don't go in to play a video game because we're interested in the game itself. We're going in to see how we can screw around inside of it and potentially break it. I know a lot of gamers that play Death Stranding just to see Norman Reedus catapult across the map when you eventually got too much stuff stacked on top of you. It flipped you upside down and catapulted you French style into the horizon. Okay? Uh, excuse me. Death Stranding, also known as Daryl Delivers, right? Remember when you were the post-apocalyptic UPS guy? That one from Kojima. Because he, I don't know, he just fell in love with what Amazon was up to and decided to make that the hero. <laughs> An Amazon worker, the hero of the game. But anyway, I digress back into this whole mess right here. And so this brings me to Ubisoft. Now, you've seen them go out and make an apology, and we'll talk about that in the next video. But what I want to highlight is the whole reason why they had to do that is because there isn't a standard. Ubisoft isn't unionized. They pushed for it a few times because there have been abuses from the mother studio, but the workers within have not been able to tilt the scales toward unionization. Ordinarily, I would oppose unionization. Most of the time, it's an attempt to politicize the work environment. But what we see particularly in tech is that people are abused. You remember this during the She-Hulk television show's production. We kept hearing about all of these CGI workers that were practically chained to their desk. There was one dev that, like, had a mental breakdown. He went out onto Twitter and said, Hey, I've been working 80 hours this week on She-Hulk's twerking butt. 80 hours animating a butt. I don't... I don't know the kind of mental fortitude that takes to be able to accomplish that, but I haven't got it. I will promise you, I haven't got that kind of mental strength. But that's where you're at right now, is you have Ubisoft forcing their devs into making this stuff that's not, not good. We saw the dev picture, and I guarantee you, next to none of those women that are in that picture are doing any type of coding in a major way. There's a whole group of other people that handle this stuff, that do the dirty work, the hours-long work, while the rest of these people collect all the Instagram pictures and credit. And that's how this is all melting down right now. With Bethesda unionizing, these types of visual aids are going to start vanishing in a hurry because the studio's not going to be interested in showing off the union anymore. Those people are going to be in opposition to the business. They will be enemies. So now it will be our team, and you'll have just the team leads featured as part of the project, and everybody else will be a name on a screen that potentially links to a LinkedIn uh, profile, okay? Maybe, maybe links to a LinkedIn. And that's what you're going to see going forward. Bethesda in particular is going to end up having to embrace a standard and Ubisoft should unionize so that they have to embrace a standard. You won't end up with crazy stuff like Assassin's Creed again. And that's all I have to say about this, right? The Assassin's Creed Shadows game where it's just all over the place. That's what I mean by this. And so that's what it is, guys. Just consider for a minute that game studios have the potential to change forever now. Everything could be different. Everything could be great. Or it could be absolutely terrible and they standardize into a hyper DEI situation where they're just flying through the employees in an effort to collect all those DEI bucks from BlackRock before the money runs out. Who knows, though? But I'll see you in the next video. And until then, good luck out there.